Since you somehow landed on this video, I assume you already heard about the term trading bot. Maybe you thought of it as some code that runs somewhere, does something, is deployed on some platform and just makes some money. Well, that's true on a basic level, but wouldn't you want to know how to actually build a trading bot and deploy it somewhere and let it run for 24 seven? Well, that's the goal of this video. In this video, I will show you every single step from opening your code editor to implementing the bot to deploying the bot on some cloud service. And to follow the steps in this video, you only need a computer that works and some experience in the programming language Python. And all of that I will explain in under 10 minutes. So I would say before we lose more time, let's dive straight into our code editor and see how we can build a little money printer. Well, a money printer is a pretty big word to say. Obviously, we are not going to build some genius level trading bot within 10 minutes, but I will code something that you can literally just copy and run. And you will see some trades, some profitable, some non-profitable, but at least it will be a code base that you can run in a consistent manner. And once you have this code base, you can do whatever you want with it. You can implement new strategies, even invent new strategies, and just you're just uh, free with it. So this video really aims for giving you the right information to get started with it. And once you have the basics, you can do pretty much everything with it. For example, I myself, I remember I needed a video like this where someone explains me on a really basic level how to just get started with it. But no one really did that, except the ones that did like, five hour courses or 10 hour courses over I don't know how many episodes and I thought why not break it down to 10 minutes so here we are let's just start by cloning our repository which I have created a few minutes ago so as you can see I created a repository called five minutes bot which is empty at the moment and I'm gonna just clone it into onto my uh, local machine uh, using the git clone command as you might already know if you're already into version control management but if you aren't first learn that before you even start a project so after cloning our repository let's open our favorite uh, code editor in my case it's uh, visual uh, studio code and um, proceed by creating a new file called bot.py which is the bot itself so we will code our bot into this file so what's basically left are the dependencies that you will need for this bot. The list isn't very long. In fact, it's very narrow. You only need to install CCXT and Pandas. Those packages can be installed via pip, so I highly recommend doing so. And after we installed those two packages, we can import them into our project. So as you can see, I'm importing CCXT and Pandas into my bot.py file. And now comes the next step. We need to create a secret.py file. It doesn't have to be called like that, but it's a really important file. In this file, we will define our API keys. Those API keys are needed in order to connect my bot with my cryptocurrency exchange account. So what does that mean? Well, a trading bot is just a piece of code that does some calculations and then outputs something. And those calculations are mostly things like, if this condition is true, open a trade, or if this condition is true, close the trade. And this opening and closing a trade has to happen somewhere. And that's why our bot has to have some type of connection to an exchange where we trade cryptocurrencies or stocks or anything else. So in my case, we are going to use the cryptocurrency exchange FTX, which I've been using for almost one and a half years now. In my opinion, it's a really solid exchange to do these types of things. So I would also recommend for you to create an FTX account if you haven't already, but it's also fine if you have like a Binance account or some other exchange, because almost every exchange has like an API interface where you generate the key and then insert into your code. So let's generate those API keys. As you can see, I'm on FTX now. It's my personal account and under settings, I can go to API and then click on create API key. As you can see, I already have a key for my personal purposes, but when I click create API key, I have to verify uh, this action with my phone number. After I verified my phone number, as you can see, there are two keys to copy. First is the API key and the second is the API secret. So you don't really have to know what the API key stands for or the secret stands for. Maybe the names can tell you a little bit, but what you have to know is 
you need to have a file in your project where you store these uh, both keys and variables. In my case, I created a variable called public key and a secret key and assigned those two keys from my FTX account to those variables. So after we assigned those two keys to variables, we can start setting up our connection to our FTX account in order to open trades and close trades and so on. So as you can see, I'm importing the secret.py file in order to get the two keys. And then I'm defining a variable called exchange, which is our connection to our FTX account. So as you can see, uh, this uh, FTX function takes two parameters. First, the API key and second, the secret key. So I'm just passing my public key and secret key from secret.py to those two parameters. And that's it. This is our connection. We can call this exchange variable anytime for any action that we want to do on our FTX account. So to fast forward the process a little bit, I will blend in the bot.py file right now and explain the code on the fly here on this snippet. So this is how bot.py in the end looks like. But while I'm explaining this code snippet, uh, I highly recommend you to check out the description box and look at the repository itself. So you can look at the files there and even download it, work on it on yourself and so on. So I'm totally happy to give you the code, but now let me explain how this works. So at the beginning, we can see we have four variables. First one is asset name, the second one is time frame, third one fetching limit, and the fourth one trading size or trade size. The asset name is just the coin or the asset that we want to trade. In our case, it's Bitcoin Perpetuals. The time frame is if you're already a little bit into financial market, essentially you can watch the Bitcoin price in five minute candles, you can watch them in one hour candles, you can watch them in like one day candles. It's like the resolution of the price chart. So we define it as five minutes here. Third variable is a fetching limit. This is just for when we fetch the data to have a limit of how many candles we get into our program. So we don't have to like fetch 5,000 candles because it consumes time. So we just fetch 1,500 because it's more than enough. And last but not least, we have the trade size, which is, as the name says, the amount of Bitcoin that we want to buy and sell every trade. So we set that value to a fixed value, um, yeah, 0 0.0004. The exchange variable, I already explained it, it's our interface to our FTX account. So we can do calls like create order, fetch data and so on. And next is the function in position. This function is really simple. It just calls exchange.fetch positions and then checks if there is any position already open on the account. Secondly, we have the execute function. This function is the actual function for our bot that does apply the strategy and opens a trade or closes it. But before we dive into this function, let's look at the run function, which is below the execute function because the run function is called first and the execute function is called within the run function, as you can see. So in the run function, we define find a variable called bars. This calls a function called fetch OHLCV uh, through the exchange variable and passes like the asset name, which time frame we want to fetch and the limit of how many candles we want to fetch. With that, we have the bars variable, which holds the Bitcoin data. Now to be able to apply our strategy to the Bitcoin data we just fetched, we want to format it into a data structure that is more intuitive to play around with. And that's where the pandas library comes into play. As you can see in this code block, we create a data frame through calling pd.dataframe. pd stands for pandas, by the way, we aliased it at the beginning of the file when we imported pandas. And after constructing our data frame, we call a function called supertrend. We give it our data frame and assign it back to our data frame. What we did here is we took our data frame, we gave it a function called supertrend, which is the indicator that we are using for our strategy. But I will explain later what I mean by that. And we assign it back to our data frame, which has the supertrend values. But as I said, I will explain what it means in a bit. And lastly, we call execute and give it our data frame to work with. So I mentioned the supertrend indicator. An indicator in the financial markets is basically just a mathematical formula that, that takes, for example, Bitcoin price, 
does some calculations on it and outputs something and it mostly indicates to some momentum or to some trend or something like that for this example you don't have to really know exactly what this super trend indicator does all you have to know is that it indicates a trend an uptrend or a downtrend but to be like an expert or to actually know what you're doing i would highly recommend to read like documentation about the super trend indicator or if you're interested in implementing other different strategies to read their documentation as well but as I said this is a really basic trading bot so uh, it will be enough you just know that it indicates to a trend let's continue with the code explanation now we call it the execute function this execute function took our data frame as a parameter and what we just did in the first three lines of the function we read out the last values of the data frame in the columns in uptrend timestamp and close those are the three data points that we will need from this data frame the rest isn't really needed but it's cool to have if you want to develop this bot then you can also play around with the open value the low the high value and so on but we only need these three the next code block is really easy we just use those three variables to form some conditions to know when to enter a trade or not in this case we're saying if not in position and in uptrend we create an order and else if we already are in a position so else if or elif in position and not in uptrend then create the order and make a sell so in the first condition we buy bitcoin and in the second elif block we sell the coin really simple right well that's basically it that's the trading bot itself we could just go into our command line and type python3 uh, bot.py and um, it will calculate everything as expected and enter a trade if we are in an uptrend and um, if you are already in a trade it will sell it if we are in a downtrend well you don't want to sit there and call this bot.py yourself all the time, am I right? You want some instance to do it for you. And you also don't want your laptop to be open all the time. It's really power consuming and why would you do that? Wouldn't it be better if you have some cloud platform or cloud service where you deploy your code onto and it just runs your bot every, let's say five minutes or every minute and then trades for you. Well, this is really easy with the platform Linode. This video, by the way, is not sponsored by them. It would be really cool, obviously, but it's not. What Linode allows us to do is it gives us the ability to use their servers for our needs. But let's see what I mean by that. Hey guys, Imin from the future here. So Linode is a very user-friendly cloud computing platform. Cloud computing can sound very complicated and it also sounds like something where you have to do a lot of things to actually achieve what you want to achieve. But it's actually not that complicated. Instead, it's really easy with Linode. So to use Linode, first sign up on the platform then after you signed up go to your nodes and click on the create button which is on the top left corner and select Linode so now you have to specify the operating system on which your Linode will run so in my case I chose Ubuntu uh, version 2204 LTS and then in the region section I chose Frankfurt as the server where my Linode will actually run on because it's the nearest server to my place that Linode offers. So the last crucial step that we need to do is define how many gigabytes we need and how much processing power we need to use. So obviously since our script is really really simple we don't need a whole CPU just working for us. Instead we can use a shared CPU which is also much cheaper. As you can see I would only pay five dollars a month but if you have signed up newly you will have a two month free time period anyway so for 60 days you can just use Linode for free so the only step left is to give our Linode a name and last but not least a root password so every time you log in into this Linode via SSH you are asked to enter a password so after creating this Linode we have to wait a couple minutes until it is set up so basically we can just SSH into this machine as you can see on the video and start cloning our github repository onto this Linode machine. If you've copied my repository and made a private repository out of it, you will most likely have to configure an SSH key on the Linode machine and add this generated SSH key to your github account since you're trying to clone a private repository. So after creating an SSH key and adding it to your github account, clone the github repository onto your Linode machine. So now to make the bot run 24 seven, we only need to do one step. And after that, you have a working bot. That's it. And the last thing to do is to configure ChromeTab. If you're asking yourself what ChromeTab is, 
That's exactly what I asked myself too. But after a quick Google search, I found out that ChromeTab is just a, is a daemon that runs on the Linux operating system, which you can tell what programs to run at what time intervals. So I can tell it to run my Python script every 5 minutes or every 15 minutes or every hour. You can actually do a lot with this tool. But in our case, I will configure it to run the script every 5 minutes. To do that, simply type ChromeTab minus E and press enter. I think if you do it for the first time, ChromeTab will ask you which code editor you want to use. So you can choose Wim or nano in my case i just choose whim and then at the very bottom after all the comments you need to put this syntactic beauty here to find the syntax for it you just need to google cron tab every five minutes or whatever time interval you're aiming for after entering this you can just type space and use the python command as if you would call it by yourself as you can see i typed python 3 and then the absolute path to my script which is directly located on the root folder after that we can specify a file in which our program output will be stored into. You can just copy what I'm writing here since explaining this would be an overkill for this video. So after that we can save and close the file and just wait a couple hours until our bot has made some trades. I will just leave the SSH connection now and let the bot trade for me over the night and surprise myself with the results tomorrow morning. I let the bot run for the last 11 hours now and let me say that I actually peeked into the log files and looked into the trades that the bot made and there were two trades that it made and both of them were positive. So both of those trades made us some money. But let's look into the log files together to see how much profit we actually made. So as you can see our first trade is made on September the 6th at 12.50 am that was basically right after I went sleeping and we bought Bitcoin perpetuals at price 19,801 and right after 2 hours and 50 minutes it sold the Bitcoin perpetuals at price 19,874. That means with the first trade we made about 0.367% profit which is pretty good for one trade that means if we went in with ten thousand dollars without any leverage we would have made about thirty seven dollars so let's look at the second trade the second trade was actually entered four hours ago and ended about 30 minutes ago so this one came in really new this one we bought at price 19,830 and sold it at 19,893 that is a profit of 0.31 percent so that means this one scored a really similar profit as the first one but slightly less so in this case if we went in with ten thousand dollars we would have made about 31 dollars so in total over the night with ten thousand dollars capital i I would have already made $67 without doing anything. Well, technically speaking, I was sleeping, so I was doing something, but not really anything. So that's pretty cool. But the actual cool part starts when you build your own trading bot. Letting your creativity flow and coding the craziest algorithms can really create some beautiful results. So I highly encourage you to build your own trading bot with your own algorithms with this very template that I just gave you. As I already mentioned, you can find this bot in a GitHub repository in the description box, and you can just clone it fork it whatever and work on it however you desire well that was it with the video i hope you enjoyed i would highly appreciate a like and subscribe and i hope you guys build some interesting trading bots if you do or if you did let me know in the comment section i'm planning on doing all kinds of trading bot videos in the near future so if you have any wishes or any suggestions for a trading bot video please let me know in the comment section i will definitely read your comments and i will definitely respond to them so please please let me know so i hope to see you on my channel very soon and peace out.